Hello, hi, and welcome to today's video, which is the second part of a series uh, concerning UDTs, user defined types, or also called PLC data types. So, new types of data that you can create. Uh, in our example, last time we actually created one of those data types here. You can see it PLC data types. There's tank, and every tank that we want to use, um, the, these two that you can see here in the other software, every tank is very similar, has uh, is using the same type of data, which is it has a fill level, which is integer, maximum level, minimum level, also integer, liquid in, out, and out of limits, which are Boolean values. <clears throat> Since we're having two tanks, we don't need to create all of this now copy-paste a second time or so. This is like the layout we have, the blueprint, and whenever we have a new tank, if I would have a, uh, a third one, I could go into my into any data block, right? Into any data block and just create a new tank. Uh, let's call it tank new. Say it's data type tank, and you see all of these variables are uh, all of these values are automatically put in that one um, variable there. Um, yeah, that's the general behavior. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the last video, <laughs> the part one. That's what we did. Um, this time I want to show you very quickly and just scratching the surface because those are very powerful. You can do a lot with those data types. Um, I want to show you just on the surface how you work with them, what you actually can do. Therefore, I did not create this. <laughs> this was just a test actually. Um, uh, I have my main function here and now it's actually very simple. If I want to use tank one or and tank two, tank three, tank four, tank five, they are sitting in our tanks. So let's say I want to check something in it. Don't look at the program right now because that won't make any sense. I just want to show you what you can do. Uh, let's say I have a normally open contact and I have an assignment and this normally open contact should check something in the first tank. I can just go here and go to my data block and there you see, hey, is it something from tank one or is it something from tank two? I want something from tank one. I select tank one. And then you see all values that are in tank one are now, uh, are now checkable for me, selectable from me. Uh, so I want to see how, if liquid is going out of tank one, I can select something here on the other side. Let's select something from tank two. I can just go here, tank tank two and this should say hey this is liquid going in into tank two whatsoever this always looks very similar let's analyze this here right the little text you have always in what are those Bra those upper case bracket thingies those those two lines up there um those here <laughs> anführungszeichen in german <clears throat> um, in there we have the name of the database right data block so tanks then separated with a dot we have the first entry here which is tank uh, zero one if we go in here so that means we're looking in here then the next is we have another dot you see it here dot that means we're even looking into that data here so i open this up this dot is opening it up and now we are in here and there you see we want to access liquid out which is here liquid out so we're accessing this on the second one let's see the second example here tanks so database tanks again let me make that float then we have tank 02 so not the first one but the second one and then we have liquid in so we are using this one here so would now have a third fourth fifth sixth and so on and so on we could of course relate to those as well <clears throat> yeah that's how you could use the data now from these pretty simple it's the same as with arrays and struct, uh, structs <clears throat> so that's the first thing the second one um the very very huge advantage of those um data types user defined types is that they are standardized and throughout your program they are standardized with your project work and you will see what that means in a minute um let's take this let's make a new function let's call this i don't know tank control for example tank control is a new function what you would usually do without having a data type a user defined type you would have some inputs, right? Uh, let's say fill level. I, I would just use those inputs here. Fill level, max level, min level. Those were inputs and they're all integer. 
integer, 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 you have an output. Let's say this is, what did I call the other values here? Liquid in, liquid out, out of limits. Liquid in, liquid out. And let's say this one is here, out of limits is an in out. Right? So that's the structure of our function now. So if you call this function, you will have to put all the inputs and all the outputs on the function. Now that's not bad if you just have one or two tanks. I could now here collect, connect the inputs. Let's say this is a memory 30, uh, a memory word 30, and so on and so on. So you need to connect each individually. That's not bad if you have one, two or three tanks, but if you have, now consider you have not one tank, you have not two tanks, you have three, you have four, you have five, six, seven, eight, nine tanks. You see how many times you need to connect. Here it's just six times, but usually a user-defined type, you can have dozens of sub-variables in there. So uh, this could have dozens inputs, dozens outputs. So every time you have to connect more and more and more and more and more. And even worse, <clears throat> let's say we have connected something everywhere. Uh, doesn't matter. I will just connect random stuff right now. Um, I'll just connect random stuff, right? And let's say we have this function now multiple times, right? How many those are? So they, they are, of course, they should be using different um, IOs here. Um, the thing is, this works fine. What could happen? Hey, your tanks do not look the same anymore. So you go in the function, you change, of course, some functionality in here, which I do not have at all, but Imagine there's fun functionality here. Um, let's say there is a new in out variable. This in out is called warning. Right? We have a new in out, that's a warning. Now I can go back to my program. You see all of these are red now. Red, 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 meaning something is wrong. Pretty bad. So what do we do? We just recompile. And you see now they are not red anymore because now the program adjusted to the new variable here. But what we need to do we need to put a warning here, 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 warning here, warning here, warning here. Now imagine having hundreds of tanks or dozens. That is quite a lot of effort, quite annoying. This is without using your, um, your UDT here. Now, let's see what I can do with the UDT is... This tank control with UDT. So it's pretty much the same. It could, it would be the same behavior right now. So what I do is just very easy because I do already have this structure here, right? Those data, they are all saved in our UDT. So what I do for this tank control, it does not need a fill level as input. It does not need, it needs all of this, but all of these are already in our tank. So I can just import a new variable into our function, right? And this variable will be of, um, type tank. Let's say this is tank thing. <laughs> and this is now of type tank. And so I search for my type. Hey, it's tank. So that's good. And you see, now this has all of these already in here. That is pretty cool. So if you now call the function, where's my second network here? If I now call this function, all I need to connect is a variable of type tank, right? And it will also tell me, like if you just go on top here, it will tell you, hey, this is an in out of variable type tank. So we just go here. I take, for example, the first one here should be for tank one. I take my tank one, done, right? And now instead of connecting 10 things up here, I just connect one, which is a representation of all of the variables. Now, what we did here was we, changed something right we changed something we added this warning which we also want to do for our tank here like if you remember this tank tank one does not have warning yet right? it does not have warning yet if we go here if i also go to the variable uh, to the function here you see there is not this warning thing what we could do now would be a new in out warning blah it's of type bool 
we need to recompile and everything because now this is here broken as well. I need to do this, need to do that, and then I need to reconnect. We don't want to do any of this, right? So I can get rid of this warning here again because this warning should be added to our UDT. So let's see, I get rid of the warning again. And now let's just add this to our tank. Tank will get a new line here. This is called warning and we can use with that warning now everywhere. Uh, it's called warning. The only thing you will see now is that in our database, in our data block, all of these are now an error of the, the ones with data type tank. Of course, we need to recompile this. So just recompile it. But before recompiling, I show you in our main function, you see here, there is no error. Because we did not have, we do not have new IOs. We just have chain, made changes to the uh, data type. So let's do this. Let's compile and let's see. Here, of course, they now have warnings, both of them. That also means that if I go into my tank control with UDT, my in out here also has the warning now. Meaning that if you use it now 20 times, it is automatically added. And you can now, of course, use this here in your program somehow, right? If you want to. If you don't want to use it, there is also, it is not mandatory to use them here. If you have a function, right? This one here. Do you see all of these IOs? The standard setting is that they are mandatory. So you are, you have to use them somehow. If not, program will at least throw a warning, usually even an error. For the UDT here, doesn't matter. If you don't use one of these, you don't need to. Like all of these are optional, but they are inside the tank. The only disadvantage that we have through this, uh, well, two disadvantages, it is complicated to use those, to get used to them and to really know when to use them. Um, but now you, everyone, you know, uh, you don't know when to use them exactly, but you know they exist, which will help you in the future already. Um, the second disadvantage is, of course, now all of this needs some storage. So the program is a little bit bigger if it comes to storage size, so to some kilobyte. And so that's, oh, no, kilobyte nowadays. That's so bad. Of course, it's not, but it's a slight disadvantage uh, but more the it's getting more and more complicated the data types um yeah you see this one here without a udt this one here with a udt i think the the advantage is clear to be to, uh, is clearly visible the only problem here is you really need to um, get a lot of experience with udts to be really really efficient in using them um even i am not using them many uh, a lot but well now you know they exist, which is a huge advantage. <laughs> There's, of course, also more that you can do with those. This is just beginner's level, right? This is, But that's already enough for starters to know. Good. Sorry. That's been already uh, 12 minutes-ish. Uh, where, is, where is the time? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Um, last things, as always. Thanks for watching, right? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to, uh, to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Um, don't forget that we have a forum now, which is actually getting more and more active. Like, if I check this out, you can see there's, there's already a lot of entries. I put a link in the description below. And, of course... If you want to help me out a little bit, you can do that by just liking the video, by just subscribing, of course. But also, if you have one or two dollars too much, um, you can just throw them my direction if you're thankful. I put a link of my campaign here, of my GoFundMe, in the description below. Uh, thanks, Anonymous333. Thanks, Ansar. Sheila Kala. Thanks, Thomas. I think I already said thanks to you. Uh, great because of you i can keep this up and also because of the likes because of the subscribes and because of the views um thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video have a nice it is easter weekend have a nice well at least here in germany it's a long weekend uh but everyone else have a nice weekend have a nice week <laughs> i'll see you in the next one Bye bye